Welcome to this video in a rapid game I played in club uh, a couple of weeks ago and the opponent is the same guy who's called XYO on um, Chess Cube and he's a moderator in my cafe because um, I know him in real life and we go same club and the same tournaments as well and um, I did a ma bullet match against him on um, Chess Cube not too long ago um, it was a few videos ago against XYO aka Jason Lowe and I was playing him as black in this um, 20 minute each game in the advanced coaching rapid play at 3 C's chess club in Oldham it was, the day was actually 4th of October it says here but that's um, not true it was like probably the day he got analysed or something but anyway uh, in this game he was white I kicked off with E4 and I respond with um, not the French <coughs> defence, I've converted from that um, dubious opening and I've decided to play e5 which um, as long as you don't play the Petrovs or the Berlin Wall can get awfully sharp and if you don't know enough theory you're bound to get smashed quickly by the King's Gambit or something but in this game I face practically the least ambitious line White can play against um, 1e5 after knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 Knight f6. White has um, a few good moves here. There is um, Knight g5, which is trying to get into fried liver, which would be um, these moves. So d5, you play. And it takes, Knight takes, and then Knight takes f7 is the um, fried liver. So after, cause the idea is after King takes f7, Queen f3 check. The only way to hang on to the piece is to play King up to e6, and although. Uh, <coughs> White's um, down material. He can get a strong attack here, but Black is supposed to neutralise it, and it, it peters, peters out into boring equality after a bit. Which is why a one e five is used as a drawing weapon a lot at the top level because the sharp variations usually end up in boring positions, and the uh, main lines like pretty drawish as well. But uh, sub twenty two hundred level one e five is usually used to hack rather than to get a draw. Also possible this move is d3 and then c3 which is going to be the slow Italian and the idea is why it wants to play d4 at a favourable moment and this is um, a good way or a bit boring and the exciting sharp way is d4 and after say takes to play um, e5 kicking the knight away and after d5 <coughs> bishop b5 knight e4 knight takes Let's say bishop d7, bishop takes c6, b takes c6, and um, just go for a few more moves. I think the move of this <coughs> position is to um, castle. Say bishop c5, bishop b3, castles, and now there's this like counterintuitive maneuver where you go f3, kicking the knight, and after knight g5. Yeah, knight g5, that's the one. Um, you play f4 and then knight e4. This is like the main line in the. Um, it's like a kind of like two knights, this max lunge attack. Pretty interesting. You can get it out to the um, Scotch Gambit as well. Which it, it probably only leads to equality, but it's interesting. It's sharp and it's more interesting than the move for knight c3, which can actually be punished immediately by. Knight takes e4 by black, which is known as a fart trick, but for some reason I don't, I don't play it. First of all, the first point is, if knight takes e4, then we have d5, forking the knight in bishop, regaining 1, and black will have a better development and position. White, if white tries to throw in the um, vision of bishop takes f7 check, which looks tempting because it starts black from castling, this is also bad, and maybe even worse than the previous line. Because after king takes f7, knight takes e4, d5. <coughs> Black's very strong centre more than compensates for his slightly compromised king position. And after he develops his bishop and moves his rook to e8, he can just play king g8. Oh, sorry, f8. He can just bring put his king to g8 in artificial castle. Then white's worse here already. Uh, back to the game. But I, I don't punish it and just play bishop c5, d3, d6, which is known as the old stodge a lot. 
and you shouldn't be over playing this as white but there is an interesting little trap where where he goes bishop g5 and the trap is is that you think that a logical move in this position for black is just to castle away this is actually a blunder because now look at knight d5 and look at all this pressure being exerted on that poor knight and back to and the thing is the knight can't be defended again so black's pawn structure is going to be completely compromised and then white's just going to castle queenside and hack him up on g-line and there's surprisingly little that can be done about this uh, there's a few moves here i played bishop e6 which isn't supposed to be that great but there's also knight a5 and trying to um, kick the bishop away. In fact, this might win the two bishops. This and h6 kicking the bishop away, and forcing it to make a decision. If they take here, well, I quite I quite like them um, taking with g pawn to get the um, open line. But I play bishop e6, and now he plays knight d5, and this doesn't really have much point to be honest, especially since it can just be taken off. Uh, Bishop b5 um, is better move here. I play h6 to get rid of this annoying pressure. And now after knight takes f6, g takes f6. He now plays I think a mistake with bishop takes e6. I think the uh, bishop should just retreat rather than swapping off here. It seems to favour me because I get a massive pawns in the centre. And this pawn can help support a d5 advance because the um, f6 pawn always protects e5. Maybe better is uh, bishop h4. And I say I play bishop takes c4, d takes c4. Although white's now got double pawns, there was an annoying Marozzi Bind style clamp on d5. So that won't be very good. So I'd just leave the bishop where it is. I say play, but I'm not sure actually though because I can't play queen d7 in castle long because f6 hangs. So this would be quite annoying. But it makes it easy by taking off, takes, and now retreats to bishop. Now I move the queen to e7, ready for queenside castling, because he's probably going to castle kingside, and I can then hi try and hack him up on the g line. He now plays c3, so he, he wants to support a d of d4 advance at a favourable moment. Now a good thing to do in these type of positions is to give the bishop a retreat square on a7, and then the bishop can stay eyeball on the f2 pawn. So I play a6. And after knight d2, which finds a bit, which might be planning queen h5 checking some lines, which should like force the queens off, or black would have to lose castling rights, which I probably would with king d7. But also I prefer to maybe to re reroute to knight at queenside, because it's obvious I'm going to castle there, because I can't go kingside, because it's way too open, and I can't use the g line then as well. So I castle long, also out of any um, queen h5 checks, and he goes h3. Not sure what the uh, maybe idea is of this move. Um, I go d5, hitting him in the centre, and now he should just begin his attack with b4, bishop a7, and a4. And white is actually starting to get some initiative here with stuff like rook b1, b5 coming. In fact, b5 might be an immediate threat, but my counterplay in the centre should hold the balance. Well, let's have a look what the engine thinks actually. In this position, it's given us almost dead, well, slight advantage, about equal actually, if not maybe a tiny advantage to white. Well, that's about equal again. Knight b8 seems to be the best move here, but that'd be a hard move to find that in a rapid play time control. And then say b5, you play a5 and lock it up. That's about equal. But this is a better practical chance in the game because after e takes d5, this is a positional blunder. Because after e takes d5, I've undoubled my pawn, and now look at these pawns now on um, f6, e5, and d5. I mean, I used to have that a lot as white that term uh, with pawns on f3, d4, and e4, and I used to hammer people with it. And now I've got the same as black, which is pretty epic. And it's big, but it's also a mobile pawn center because if a pawn center is mobile, then it's a lot better because. It can be, you know, cause it moves a lot, it can just push enemy pieces away and pack him up through the centre. And white share should be trying to castle queenside, I think, as well, so we don't get hacked on the g-line. But white can practically forget now his chances of a queenside attack after this. It's got, because black's control centre is going to be too much, and 
White needs to get his king to safety first. First of all, he plays knight b3, kicking my bishop. I retreat to a7, and now he castles short. After rook is g8, black has got the advantage. I've got an open g line to work with. Um, my king's safe because his knight has blocked his b pawn for a start, and his a pawn's hard to get in. I have the open line, I have this strong centre, and you just need to try and win it. So he plays d4 now, which locks out my bishop. I don't want to really be taking them, my pawn set the broken up. And he's threatening to take, and then I have to take with knight or queen, I can't take with pawn because it's a pin. So I play e4. And now my plan is to move the queen to g line, to attack on the g line, and then play f5, f4, f3. And then opposite side cast them, which I have a lot these days, the initiative is very important. It's more important than material. I'd rather be a couple of pawns behind and have a crushing attack on the um, an opposite side, and have the initiative in opposite side castling, and then the other way around. He plays rook e1, because now my bishop isn't eyeballing the f2 pawn, um, it's more he can move, move his rook off safely. Also, uh, he might give his king a retreat square and escape square in some lines. I carry on my plan of rook g6, and I want to treble on the um, g line with my queen in between the two rooks, which I think is the best way to have. Heavy pieces on the half open file. Whoops. He plays rook e3, which is preparing um, rook g3 a maneuver to try and neutralize the pressure. I go queen g7, and after rook g3, he might be threatening rook takes g6 for a queen g4 check, which would leave his king safer with the queens off. Although the end game would probably be better for black due to white's pawn structure getting compromised, it'd be hard to win. <coughs> So I play king b8 and sides to part of it, and also um, in the opposite side castling, it's worth, um, especially when you're queen side, it's worth like inviting the tempo on this move to stop any like nasty checks and stuff like that. Now he plays knight c5, which looks a bit of a positional suspect. His knight is strong though, threatening to win the exchange, and it seems that to take it off I have to get rid of this bishop, but it's a bad bishop anyway, so it doesn't matter that white's got a bishop against the knight, and White's bishop is so terrible. Then uh, in my knight, in fact, after bishop takes c5, d takes c5. White has got a very bad bishop, which is only function is to pin that pawn, which ain't going to be pinned for much longer. And also, um, every pawn move like creates a weakness, and so now he's captured away. He's not controlling e5 square anymore. And after that as well, I've got this pawn in e4, which controls an outpost at d3. And that knight, as we're going to see, is going to be an absolute fawn in his side. Well, you're putting pressure on f2 and all that, and his bishop's just really bad. And now um, he hasn't got any, like, and his pawns are doubled as well to make matters worse. So I just move into e5, and now he swaps off and plays bishop g3. Now, of course, he's got the strategic threat of bishop takes knight because um, a knight is so much better than his bishop. But I, when I play knight d3, comes into this brilliant square which also attacks a pawn, which I don't ever want to take to be honest, because it might give him some counter play on the b line. But the only thing I have to be careful of is that his bishop's um, eyeballing my c7 pawn, but that's nothing. He plays king h2, and now I play f5, beginning my plan of ramming the f pawn down his throat. And black's over two pawns, better according to Houdini. Also, I'd been playing a lot faster as well, I was like. Six or seven minutes against him, um, like one or two at this point, and he blunders with f3. Um, the only way to stay in the game was to something like queen d2, and after rook g8 to play rook g1 to stop at f4, and then mate on g2. And now um, a little bit tougher because the only move for black to keep like a significant advantage is actually um, the counterintuitive move queen g5. So when you think about it, I'm attacking them, um, I want the queens on, my king's safe, there's nothing against my king, but it's the only way to get a significant advantage, because he has to practically take, and after h takes g5, again, oh, that's also counterintuitive, because it blocks my g-line pressure, but that pawn mess is just match winning, I mean, there's an immediate threat of f4, and then, when he attends to that, I'll just take a pawn on c5 or b2, probably b2, because the up and b-line ain't going to matter anymore, with queens off, and c 5s double, so it's probably going to drop off soon anyway. In fact, knight takes b2, knight d3, and then he can't support with b4, so I'll just take the c5 pawn, and black's going to win a couple of pawns there, and just match them pawns through the centre and win easily. 
But I'd have to find a tough move there with Queen G5 and the rapid play tag control, so it'd have been hard. But F3 is just a blunder because now you notice that his G3 bishop isn't um, just protected anymore. And there isn't any way to protect it, so after Rook G8, because this awful knight here is absolutely horrible octopus knight, can't even, it prevents Queen E1, so we can't defend the bishop. And if it moves, then it's mate, so he has to give it up. Now G4. Which also can't be good, but it's lost anyway. So I'm just an octopus knight up for a pawn. Just have to, just have to be careful not to play. E takes F3, double question mark. Ice play H5, ripping open more lines, leading to a quick victory. He goes queen E2, and after H takes G4, rook G1. Can actually uh, play. I think I can actually still take the pawn despite the pin, because I'm attacking this queen. If it doesn't... If it say moves then I used to move my queen away. So let's say he takes my queen. He's take his. If, and then he can't stop the queen in, so he takes the rook and his queen. And win. It's not even actually a better way to win. But my way is equally as efficient. I used to play G3 check. He allows a fork um, with knight f4 check. And he actually makes me play until checkmate, but we shall leave it there because I haven't got rest at game score. Um, if he played the, what else could he play? King h1. What's the best way to win this? Just check the engine. Oh, just simply queen h6, and there's nothing that can be done to stop him. Um, queen takes h3, so this is the game over. It's forced mate actually. But anyway, this is the um, final position in this game. And I played well to say it was a rapid play time control. And then, as you see, he um, gives me quite a hard time in these bullet games. <laughs> so was, I was happy with this win. And um, he has a habit of beating me sometimes as well in rapid games. So I was very happy with it, actually. And it also shows what a bad opening the old stodge is. Another thing to learn from this video are how to use a mobile pawn center and a superior minor piece, how to convert it into victory. And how to have a safer king and opposite side castling. It's a very destructive game and you can all take something from it. And um, please check out my own cafe on Chess Cube which is growing, um, which is expanding rapidly now. We're getting more than 20 people now at some points. And the future's looking bright for Epic Chess. And please subscribe, I want to get 300 subs as soon as possible. And please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.